The most important lesson that man can learn from his life is not that there is pain in this world, but it's possible for him to transmute it into joy. Rabindran Tagore was born in 1861, was the first Asian to win the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1913. To fully grasp his stature, his poems inspired the national anthems of three countries, India, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. He was a polymath, a poet, musician, novelist, essayist, playwright, educator and visual artist. It was his humanism that was a huge influence around the world. He traveled extensively from Japan to Peru, from the US to Europe. He died in 1941. Today, he is the most important figure in Bengali literature, language, and music. In this video, I discuss Tagore's philosophy East versus West, art versus materialism, spirituality versus work, and more. I'll tell you about one of his best short stories, and finally, his message on how to live life free from consumerism. And I will also read one of his poems. Tagore agreed with Gandhi that India should be free from colonialism, but Tagore was strongly against nationalism. Tagore extensively wrote about the rise of nationalism in Japan and he predicted that it would lead to disaster at home and abroad. He saw nationalism as a kind of madness that always resulted in wars. The two world wars both fueled by nationalism in Europe and Asia. For Tagore, nation states were formed as a war machine to expand their control and territory. So he warned against the fascist tendencies of nation states that they only care about their own people. A nation state doesn't care if people on the other side of the border experience famine, starvation or destroyed by diseases. It only cares about its own selfish interest. Today a good example is food waste in some countries and starvation in other countries. Quote, because the material world is the world of quantity where resources are limited and victory waits for those who have superior facility and weapons, therefore success in the path of progress for one group most often runs parallel to defeat of another. Tagore also believed in universal humanism. He says, We have our greatest delight when we realize ourselves in others. And this is the definition of love. For him, every human civilization like China, India, Persia, Greece, Egypt and more were like peaks that are attached to the same hill, humanity. Tagore says, liberated humans are those who think beyond their national borders. Here's a quote. Men are so closely knit that when you strike others, the blow comes back to yourself. But nationalism makes us selfish, greedy and blind to those outside of our own borders. Being selfless is an immense economic risk in today's world, but once you go beyond greed, you find happiness. According to Tagore, while alive, we are connected to all humans, only in death we find ourselves alone. For him, the meaning of life is to love everyone, no matter what nationality. Tagore was also a critique of rationalism, somewhat similar to Dostoevsky in that modern nationality distorts as well as dehumanized people. Tagore thought modern man was like a crazy distorted giraffe, whose head touched the clouds with illusion of power material success, while its heart was stuck down below unhappy and unfulfilled. Knowledge and efficiency are like hotels, Tagore says. It's clean and nice, but the host is missing. To be spiritually liberated, education was crucial for him, but the rigid coercive education system could also break a person's spirit. He argued that education should be a process of self-discovery that allows people to be greater than they are themselves. Tagore believed since intellect is the same for all humans and science as a product of human intellect reduces everything to prototypes, species, numbers and statistics. The only way to truly understand other people is unique human being, we have to turn to art and stories. Why? Because art and stories turn all creatures into unique characters, each individual with unique emotions. It gives them humanity while science simply depict humans as numbers and statistics or citizens of a nation. He also pointed out that your intelligence belongs to others, i.e. to provide food and security for your family, boss, government. Brilliant scientists like Einstein helped create the most powerful bomb for the United States government. Alfred Nobel created dynamite. So your intellect can destroy the whole world. So intelligence and science can be equally or more destructive than helpful. So to truly understand others, we have to turn to art and stories. 
Western humanism originated from a Christian belief that all believers are equal. But in 18th century, the Enlightenment replaced God with humans that all rational beings are equal. In fact, Western science relies on a single truth, single theory, and single best answer to every problem. Two answers to one problem is often problematic. One has to be better than the other. Two theories can't coexist. One has to be wrong. Tagore understood this single-mindedness of Western philosophy, but what interested Tagore was that the Westerners were seeking truth outside, while Indians were seeking truth inside through meditation. He found problem in both ways of thinking. He was critical of the West for going too far and exploiting the world, in the process destroying nature as well as other cultures. He was also critical of Indians for being too inactive, meditating inside a temple. The West seeking one answer to everything and the East is chasing answer inside each individual. Tagore believed that the West could learn from the East to be more self-reflective, contemplative and meditative, while the East could learn from the West that active work, creativity and material endeavors too can give life a meaning. In the second half of 20th century, many Western hippies found themselves in India for some spiritual guidance. Some like Steve Jobs used their Indian experience to become better capitalists. So Tagore wanted a dialogue between cultures. He lamented the West's arrogance and selfishness and the East's aloofness and passivity. Tagore says every great civilization has solved a great problem. Western civilization challenges was to free us from nature and unite the whole world. He says, quote, The West seems to take a pride in thinking that it's subduing nature as if we are living in a hostile world where we have to wrest everything we want from an unwilling and alien arrangement of things. For Indians, however, humans come from nature and there's no need for an aggressive approach to control nature, but to be in harmony with nature. West's approach to control nature stems from Christian notion that we have come from the Garden of Eden into this ugly, wild place called Earth. So humans don't belong here. As a result, nature is seen as ugly, dirty, and need of cleanup. To give an example of this separation between Christians and others, the, the colonial English in India had the same feeling about their colonies. They were there to just extract wealth, precious commodities like tea, spices, textile, etc. and then go home. They didn't consider Indian as their equal, so they didn't really mingle with them. The same in Africa, America and Australia. Europeans only settled in places where they outnumbered the locals. Also, most settlers in America and Australia were the ones who were pushed out of Europe for their religious beliefs or criminal conviction. But in India, they never felt at home. This unfortunately put man against nature on the one hand and Christians against non-believers on the other, to the extent that it dehumanized others so that killing, exploiting, starving or enslaving them was considered totally fine by Christian standards. Why? Because for colonists, Europe still resembled a bit of the Garden of Eden while the rest of the world is ugly, wild and non-believers and sinners and bestial. In his article titled East and West, Tagore relates an anecdote about a Swedish man choosing to live among the poor Indian in Bengal when Tagore was a child. Tagore says, Hammergren, the Swedish man remains immortal as a kind soul who went past culture and color to live among the Bengalis. He represented true humanism that is not separated by race, color or nationality. To illustrate Tagore's humanism fully, I'll discuss one of his best known short stories. Tagore wrote Kabuliwala in 1892. What is it about? A writer in Calcutta, presumably Tagore himself, tells the story of a fruit seller from Kabul, Afghanistan who visits Indian city every year to sell his fruits. In the course of one of his visits, he befriends the writer's little daughter, Mini, and they bond together. Whenever the fruit seller arrives at their street, she runs to him shouting Kabuliwala. Wala is a term used for vendors like Chaiwala means chai seller, but here Kabuliwala also refers to the origin being from Kabul. So the little girl and the fruit seller laugh and joke with each other as a father and daughter would. But then there's an incident. Someone in the neighborhood refuses to pay Kabuliwala some unpaid debt. And Kabliwala or Rahman strikes him and the police arrest him. He spent years in an Indian jail. Everyone forgets him. Mini, the little girl, grows up. On her wedding day, suddenly the fruit seller, Rahman, reappears. The narrator, the girl's father, meets him and tells him that Mini is getting married, so he cannot meet her today. The fruit seller gives him some gifts. 
Surprised, Minnie's father asks him about his life. Rahman tells him about his own little daughter back in Kabul, whom he hasn't seen for years since he has been in jail all this time. She too must be grown up now. This has a devastating effect on the narrator because his own daughter is getting married today and this heightens his feeling of sympathy. He feels Kabuliwala's pain and suffering of separation from his daughter. He decides to cut on the cost of the wedding to pay Rahman some money so he can return to Kabul to see his daughter. Two fathers connected through their love for their daughter. We don't know someone until we know them. It's an incredibly touching story of humanity and how we're all the same when it comes to pain and suffering no matter how different we are. For example, how the passage of time has a devastating effect on us all. We see that in the face of the characters, they realize how much time has passed and how much they have changed. And how we understand others by putting ourselves in their shoes. Tagore grew up a Brahmin Hindu but stopped believing in religion when he discovered art, when he read this simple sentence, when it rains the leaves tremble. This simple imagery was like a divine artistic message for him to take up the spiritual journey of writing poetry, making music and paint. He says he became a kind of nature's ambassador to convey its beauty, sounds and the fleeting human emotions that bubble and die down in the sight of a flower that brings an intense feeling which soon passes. He considered himself an artist whose canvas was the entire universe, a musician whose orchestra consisted of all the birds and animals, a poet whose words were all the plants and trees and weather. Art, he says, liberated him. He says, I'm certain that I felt a larger meaning of my own self when the barrier banished between me and what was beyond myself. He says, to be an artist is not to know evil or death. That's the meaning of freedom. In a consumerist world, we define our lives meaning by how much we own and how much we can consume. Quote, our needs have multiplied so furiously fast that we have lost our leisure for the deeper realization of ourself and our faith in it. Tagore believed that the purpose of life is not to own and consume, but to be creative and make things. Freedom from materialism can give us emotional freedom. So spiritual freedom is far greater joy than material success. He says, an emperor is merely a decorated slave, remaining chained to his empire. A millionaire is kept pilloried by his fate and the golden cage of his wealth, while this fisherman is free. Now, here's a poem by Tagore. Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arm towards perfection, where the clear steam of reason has not lost its sway into the dreary desert sand of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee, into ever widening thought and action, into the heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake.